See all those fans in there? Those app lights that have been all twisted in this granitic gneiss. See that? They call that migmatite. It's when the uh, granitic gneiss has been subjected to pressures and heat, has been folded and crushed. It hasn't melted yet because it'd be an igneous rock then. Still considered a metamorphic. That's really nice to see. I love this metamorphic rock. Remember I told you I found most of my gold in metamorphic. Then after that, granite or granitic rocks and then sedimentary. And granite, of course, is the igneous rocks. See this right here? This wash? I, I, I got black sand everywhere. But this is what I wanted you to see. See this? Look at that. That's a big chunk of iron. See that rusty red quartz in there? I don't know if you can see that. There's another piece of iron right there. Look at that big old honkin' monkin' chunker. And there's some smaller pieces right there. See that? Now see how they're up here in this low pressure zone? See, as the water comes down, it drops them out here. Now look at this. I can see some of the... Look at that. See that? That means I'm getting close. <laughs> All right, I got chunks and chunks of iron in this beautiful granitic rock. So I'm going to keep heading up there and see what happens because I know I'm getting closer. All right, there's a huge fissure vein running through here. It's an epithermal. It's very shallow. And it's running in between this, this granitic gneiss and the quartz monzonite. Now come here, take a look at this. See how I got iron right there in the rock? Big old hunk of chunk of monka right there. See that? There it is. Look at that. Big nodule of iron. Whew, I'll take that one home. I like that. All right, now take a look at this. See this? There's that epithermal right here. And you got nothing but just chunks and chunks of iron. See how it's all rusty red? And you got all these nodules of iron. Look at that. Just nodules of iron running through there. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take the VLF detector and go over this thing and see if we got any targets. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So let me, let me set it up and ground balance because I know I'm going to have fun with all this heavy mineralized material here. Wow. That's hard to balance, ground balance on. All right, let's see what we got here. Got some iron. 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 Ooh, that sounds good. Got some iron in there. Ooh, look at that. Ooh. <laughs> The vein dips down into here, and then it peters out over here, then it comes in over here. Ooh, I'm taking that one too! Oh, you hear that? Big old nice chunk of signal. Ooh, there's pack rat. Now, real quick. Pack rats love anything shiny. And so if you're around old ghost towns, dig them up, you might find some coins in there. But watch your fingers, because they like to bite. That's iron, that's iron, but I like this one right here. What we're gonna be doing today is chip sampling. There's all different types of sampling, and for hard rock, we're gonna do what's called a chip sample. Uh, they have a grab sample, they have all different core sampling, all that other stuff, but today, I'm gonna show you how to do chip sampling. Very important that you do it right, because <laughs> I've seen so many guys lose track of their chip samples, and then they pull their hair out because they found gold and don't know where it came from. These are sandbags I got at Lowe's. They're really cheap, they're like 50 cents, 75 cents, something like that a piece. And they're really durable too, and they even got little straps on them right there see that I'm gonna pull targets wherever I got a target with my VLF gold bug 2 I'm gonna put them in this bag and then what you can do is if you want you can write the GPS coordinates on here or what I like to do is I like to videotape everything because your memory starts to fade after a while trust me and so what I'll do is I'll write a, a number or a letter on here and then I'll videotape the section where it came from and then later on when we take it back to the shop and we grind it I'll grind each one separately and then clean out the mill to make sure it's not cross contaminated that's very important and then if I find gold all I have to do is review the film and say oh it came from this section here uh, up on the top or wherever it's a lot easier that way but if you don't want to do that you can write GPS coordinates or you can actually put the strike of the vein and the dip and and the coordinates and all that other stuff and you put it in the bag but I like to videotape it it's so much easier I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna chip all these samples out that I got a target reading on with my VLF and then I'm gonna put a number one on here and this will be this one and I'm gonna work my way up the wash and then I'm gonna teach you a little bit about geology does that sound good to you Yeah, I know, I should have brought eye protection. Always wear eye protection. 
Wow, look at that. <laughs> I got him. Make sure you got gloves on. You never know what's going to be in there. I like to fill my bags up about halfway. Remember, the bigger the sample, the better. Because it gives you a better idea of what's inside that vein. But you don't want it so heavy you can't carry it. Oh, that's just loaded. Look at that. Oh, man, I got targets all over in this thing. Look at that. That's nothing but iron in there. Remember, gold has an affinity for iron. And during the formation process, they can drop out a solution together. Now, the gold is in a sulfur complex, and the iron starts to form. The, the sulfur will drop the gold and bond with the iron. And that's how you get iron pyrite. Remember, gold travels in two solutions. It can travel in a sulfur complex or a chlorine complex with your chlorites. And that's why you see iron and gold together. So we're going to talk geology real quick. First of all, you got to understand the language. Uh, the terms, you got to know your periodic table, you got to know all that stuff. Why? Because when you read the USGS reports, that's how they're going to talk. And if you don't know what they're saying, then you don't know what the heck you're looking at. So if you start pulling up a mine that you found out in the hills, and then it references you to a USGS report, you're going to need to know this stuff. You're going to read this a lot in USGS reports. Quartz monzonite. Don't let it fool you. It's just like granite, which is an intrusive rock, and it doesn't have a lot of quartz in it. As a matter of fact, I got some right here. I'll give you an example of that here in a minute. You, you got to understand your igneous rocks. Remember, there's three types of rocks. Igneous, metamorphic. I discussed metamorphic last time in sedimentary. Igneous is rocks made out of fire. Now, it's really important because there's two different classes, and you're going to read this a lot. You're going to read about your plutonic, and you're going to read about your volcanics. Those are the two types. Volcanics is anything that came up off, out of the earth. You got andesite, rhyolite, basalt. The crystalline structure is very tiny, very small. Then you've got your plutonics. Those are the ones that never made it to the surface. They have large grain crystals in it. And if they're really big, they're called pegmatite, porphyry. Your plutonic rocks are going to be like your gabbro, diorite, granite. You can have mixtures of rocks. Granite diorite, granitic gneiss, you can have all different mixtures. It's like making a cake. You can put all kinds of stuff in it. Now, when you're dealing with either volcanic or plutonic rocks, there's a scale that you use for that. Anything that's got lots of iron in it, and you can tell because it's really black like your basalts, are going to be what's called mafic rocks. The rocks in between, which are like your andesites, are going to going to be intermediate rocks. And then the ones that are like your rhyolites are going to be what's called felsic, which is feldspar and silica. Why is this important? You're going to read a lot of times where you see granitic gneiss that was cut by a, a diabase dike. Because wherever you have dikes that run through like diabase and basalt, and they come in contact with other rocks like slate and shales, where they come in contact, there's a thing called contact metamorphism. Change the structure and alter it. And then gold can actually be precipitated out of that. Now there's certain rocks that are known to be associated with gold. A lot of people don't talk about this, but I'm going to talk about it. All right, one of them is schist. I love schist. Schist is a metamorphic rock. You should know that. I talked about it last time. You can get a lot of things from schist. Garnets from schist, pyrite from schist. You can get gold deposits in schist. And of course, the, the most important one is green schist. Remember that. Now, you also got serpentine, especially when it's in contact with your black slate, like in California. In the contact zones there, you can have quartz and, and calcite that have gold in them. Uh, another one is chert, especially when you have uh, scar deposits. And of course, greenstone, like you have up in Canada, the Arcane Greenstone Belt. Remember, when you're discussing gold, hard rock gold, you have to have a source, a conduit, and a trap. It's really important to learn the language, okay? All right, one more thing I want to cover. All right, now, these BLFs are great for detecting iron, black sands, magnetite, hematite. Now, I'm right down below that, that outcropping up there. And I know that that's iron. Hear that? So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take another sample. But what I'm gonna do is what's called a soil sample. Is I'm gonna take areas where heavy iron concentrations are uh, sitting on top of this bedrock right here. And then I'm gonna put in the bags and number them like I showed you. And then I'll go back and then I'll hand pan them and see if I got any gold, some fine gold from it that's coming off that load. Remember not to put too much in your bag about halfway because they get really heavy. Now, if you have a White's GMT, that one has a specific mode on it called Follow the Black Sands, which is fantastic, and I should have brought it, but I didn't. And it'll actually show you the heaviest concentrations of black sand. And what you're going to do is you're going to dig it up, especially if it's like you see here, I'm up on this bench of this bedrock. And I'm going to scoop it all up, take it back, and then pan it out and see if there's anything here. When you're carrying bags of ore down off the mountain, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your bags. Remember, only fill them about halfway. You fill them up any more than that, hoo hoo, you're gonna break your legs trying to come down off that mountain. You're gonna tie your bags together. 
And what's that gonna do is it's gonna create like a saddlebag. And then you're gonna throw that over your shoulder and it'll be a lot easier to go down the hill than to sit, simply try to carry it down like this. Cause I guarantee you, in about five minutes, your hands are gonna wear out and you're gonna start tripping and losing your balance and you're gonna fall on a cactus and it ain't gonna be pretty. Flop it over your shoulder like that, see that? I got my hands free, I can go down the hill now. And of course now I can carry my metal detector and all my other gear. Wow! Do you know what this is? This is what's called an arrastra. This is what the Spaniards used to make back in the day. They would make these round pits out of stone. Then they get some big heavy stones with a center point and they would drag them around in a circle, usually by either hand powered or by mules or horses. And you can see down in here where the stone is really, really smooth. Look at that, from other stones being dragged over it. And there's the center point right there. And you know if you find one of these, oh man, that means there's some good gold in the area. Free mill too. I have never seen one of these this good. So we're gonna look around because I know there's good gold. You know what this is? This is tailing piles from that arrastra over there. See how finely crushed this has been? So this is what they had left over. They would shovel it over here away from the side and then they'd put more ore in. So I know that whatever ore looks like this, that's the stuff that has gold in it. And that's what you should be looking for too. So that's what I'm gonna do. Oh my gosh, this has gotta be it. Look at all this beautiful ore. Yeah, that's it, all right, that's the one. Oh man, there's a beehive in there. Woohoo! I'm not going down there for nothing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna focus on this little pile right here, because it looks really good. I got a lot of iron oxide and iron, and it looks like limonite from the oxidizing iron sulfide. So come here, take a look at this. I wanna show you this. You've got these bands right here of iron. It looks like manganese oxide, some iron in there. Look at that, that's some pretty looking stuff. And look at that, you can see some of that iron pyrite or iron sulfide that's basically oxidizing out. Now I'll bet you there's little traces of gold that were left behind in there too. That's why they were mining the heck out of it. Now you can see that this is their good pile right here. And of course that's the mine dump over there. I don't care about this. This is the good stuff. So I'm gonna set my detector up and go over this and I'm hoping that I find some good samples. Uh, when you're running samples through these impact mills. Now, you gotta make sure that your impact mill is clean first, okay? You don't want a piece of gold in there from the last grind to show up on this grind and you think you got gold when you don't. There we go. Now, when we built this stand, I built a little slot here so I can stick my gold pan in there. See that? The reason why is because when I go to take this off, there might be stuff in there that falls out. And there could be gold that's been stuck in those low pressure zones. Remember I told you about that? <coughs> See how some of that comes out of there? Now you're gonna brush the back of your screen off. Cause I've seen gold stick in there before. Put him down there. Now look, I want you to look at this. See this? There's hardly any material in there. It's blowing it all out. It all in there? Yeah. And maybe take a pinch more flux. Not a lot, just a little bit. Cover up some of that gold. Get all those purities out of there. I know, I'm not using the proper stir stick, but I'm using a ballpoint pen. I'm gonna stir that gold around in there. See that? I'm gonna get all that flux in there and our gold. Stir it around. Now we're ready for the heat. Right here zero it out plop that thing down there wow 11.6 grams holy cow that's better than i thought we did <laughs> 